All right, the uh, purpose of this uh, video is to go over uh, limits quiz two from last week, uh, over section 2.2, which involved uh, limits um, in conjunction with infinity. So that could be limits as x approaches plus or minus infinity, we call that n behavior, and um, also limits as y or f of x approaches infinity, which could be an aspect of n, n behavior for, for diverging functions, but also could happen uh, in the interior of a function at, uh, at vertical asymptotes. Uh, we had uh, 71 people respond to this quiz, which is a couple more than previous quizzes, so I guess it's good that more people are taking the quizzes. Um, out of uh, 40 points, it looks like uh, we had a number of people that did well. I mean, there were, it looks like, a couple 43s, which is the max you could have gotten. Um, it looks like there were another maybe, you know, eight quizzes that were 40 or above. Um, but then there were a whole bunch of these solid, uh, you know, 90, 90% in there. So that was, that was pretty good. The average uh, was 31. So that's about a 70, 78%, uh, 31.14. And the median was a little higher. The median was 33, which was 82.5% out of 40. So that means half of, uh, half of you scored higher than an 82.5% and half of you scored lower. Um, if you do reside, you know, down here, if you are, if you are one of these folks, you're not understanding limits uh, flat out. You're just not getting them. And I understand it's, it's, you know, limits are a conceptual concept, brand new to you. Um, that's, you know, people struggle with limits every year when, when we're teaching them, you know, in school. But the, the same thing applies if you're in school to, uh, as applies to remote learning which is if you're struggling with something and you do not do anything about it, you're, you're not going to fix anything. It's not going to be resolved. Now, you know, if you're, if you're down here and you're never going to take calculus and you're just trying to get through this class, then I, I guess you could kind of let it go. And if you, as long as you're participating and you can maintain whatever grade you previously had, maybe you're okay. But if you're, if you're going to calculus next year and you're down here, you've got some major catching up to do because you can't go into calculus with no idea of how limits work. So please uh, please reach out to me, let me know how I can help come to the study sessions, which very few people have been doing. Um, I don't know how many people have been watching the solutions videos, uh, but my impression uh, from what I've heard is not very many. So um, that's, uh, that's the reality, depending on where you are. Um, there were a couple questions which were flagged as uh, heavily missed, 12 and 13, so later on. These were both multiple select problems, which are always the hardest where, you know, maybe there's one right answer, but maybe there's two, maybe there's three, and so you have to kind of go through. But I also wrote down a couple others. Um, I think the uh, Google quiz automatically flags anything at, at below 50%, and obviously if only 21 or 12 people got those right, that's well below 50%. But uh, these were all right around 50%, maybe just a little bit above 50%. And that's still pretty rough. And so, um, you know, 9 and then 12, 13, 14, we'll definitely keep an eye on. Uh, the bonus was just kind of a throw-in. Um, I think it was supposed to be a 15-question quiz. So I just took one of the last questions and um, made it into a bonus. I didn't, I didn't write this, uh, this quiz, um, but I, I know you guys are used to the bonus. So instead of out of 45, uh, or whatever it was, I, I think I devalued a couple questions and make it out of 40 and then made the bonus the uh, one of the last questions. So here we go uh, away. Uh, problem number one um, gave you, in fact, problems one through six were all based on this, um, this piecewise function. And so if you didn't, if you don't understand piecewise functions, uh, then you probably really struggled with the first six problem. Um, that's a reason why we spent a couple of days with piecewise functions back in unit one, uh, just to make sure we understood them and reviewed them. But this is uh, this is talking about coming into negative five, right? And you can see that the only questions were these are all continuous, okay? Absolute values, parabolas, uh, horizontal lines, and, and lines are all continuous. So the only possible places for discontinuities, the only possible places. For limits to not exist or to have issues are at these breakpoints. Um, and, and so that's really what we're going to be interested in. What's happening at negative five? What's happening, you know, at one? 
Okay, it, what, what's happening at negative five as we come in from the right? Uh, we, we see that little, we see that little plus sign right here, right? So what's happening at negative five as we come in from the right? That's what we're trying to ask. Well, um, we just really got to check it out. We think these are all continuous, so we really just, I would just plug negative five in. You have to know which function is the right one, though. Um, you know, the absolute value function is good for numbers less than or to the left of negative five. The, the five minus x squared is the one when we're, when we're above negative five approaching it from the right. So if you use the wrong function, then that's something you just got to understand is the notation. The little plus means coming in specifically from the right side. And um, then you have to follow order of operations. That's a big one. Uh, some of you guys may have, like, added the negatives together to make, you know, 5 plus 25 and gotten 30, um, when in reality you had to do your squaring first, and then you're subtracting. So the answer on this problem uh, was negative 20, okay? So when we come into 5 from the right, we're going to have a value somewhere down here at negative 20. There it is. So there it is. And no, notice I've made it a little open circle. You don't have to draw pictures, but some of you guys are visual. I put an open circle because we're not we're not equal to five there, are we? We're strictly greater than five. All right, next problem. Uh, and by the way, 75% of you guys got that one, which is, which is okay. I mean, you're, you're basically just plugging a number into a quadratic, which is an algebra one problem. So at a, at a level like this, I would have expected that to be in the 90s. But if you um, didn't understand which side you were approaching from, that could have been a problem. I do see um, like the 30 in here. So one person didn't follow order of operations. I see a bunch of people that had 17. That means that you, uh, you use the wrong function. You use the function to the left of negative five. You should have been using the function to the right. So those are easy things to fix, but you need to, uh, you need to address that. Um, a bunch of people said DNE. Um, not sure why, but that's, that's a limit concept issue there. You, you don't understand what limits are asking. And, you know, we're two weeks into this now. You better start asking questions, okay? Figure out what limits are about. Um, number two is, the, uh, is coming into negative five from the other side. So we know that as we come in from the right, we have a parabola. It probably, you know, probably looks like this. Not that it really matters, but that's probably what it looks like. Uh, what happens when we come in from the left? This time we have the little, you know, the little minus there that says, hey, come in from the left. So this time I have to use the function below negative 5. And uh, I will. I'll go ahead and plug that in. Um, negative 5 times 3 is negative 15, negative 17, but don't forget to take the absolute value. So 17 is the answer on this one. And so that means as I come in from the right, I have a, an absolute value function that is up here. And, you know, maybe it looks like, uh, maybe it looks like this on its way to do, you know, one of those absolute value kind of things where it does the V, right? Um, anyway, uh, number, number three is based, uh, by the way, 87 is much higher. So don't, don't ask me why uh, so many people did better on that, but uh, that's, that's good. Uh, looks like one person forgot to take the absolute value of negative 17. Um, 13, uh, how would that have happened? Uh, I'm not sure. A lot of people got 13, though. Um, that's if you, okay, so you have negative 15, and you added 2 instead of subtracted 2. That, that's that mistake. Negative 15 minus 2 drops to negative 17. I think some of you guys thought that subtracting 2 brought you to 13, but we're on the negative side of 0, so you got to make sure you understand that subtracting means moving to the left. Okay. Um, number three is based on those two problems. I now have uh, a, you know, a, a parabola um, that's coming down to this point, so kind of like uh, this. Oops. Kind of like this. And a, an absolute value that's coming down to this point. And there's a gap between them, isn't it? We call this a junk discontinuity. But the, the issue here is that you can't have a limit as we approach negative 5 if the right limit and the, le and the left limit don't exist. So DME, and this is the, this, there's an issue on this one. Um, it was created, uh, I think, that when you have a non-numerical value, you have to select a certain, uh, certain option 
or written answers. And, and even if I was writing this quiz, I would probably not have known about that. Google Quiz is not a great uh, platform. Um, so we're doing the best. Um, thanks for letting me know right away. And I think once I knew that there was an issue, uh, it was fixed within five minutes. Um, if it happens in the future, uh, you know, I would not submit until you know it's fixed. Um, because we got it fixed soon enough, only five or six people were affected, and, and I did have the time to go in and make some adjustments for five or six people, um, depending on what their answers were. But um, you know, this is a glitch that certainly not your fault, but you know, you have time. You have until four, I think, to turn it in. So take that time and make sure things are uh, things are right. Uh, you guys did fine on it. And this is even with um, you know some people who told me, emailed me, and told me that what they were putting in. Um, and so those would have actually been, you know, it would have been more like maybe three percent, you know, maybe um, would have gotten this one right. So uh, yes, you know, good job understanding that one. All right, number four. Now we're over at one. Uh, we're coming in from it looks like the uh, coming in from the right, and so I need to use the function that's on the right side of one, which is the the line eight x minus one, so uh, or eight x minus four. So let's put the one in, and pretty simple math four. So uh, I have a value at uh, four when I'm coming in from the right. Okay, uh, this is just a, a line with a slope of eight, by the way. So the graph would just kind of look like that, wouldn't it? Okay. Um, let's take a look at the left limit as we approach. Um, yeah, 89% of you guys got it right. It's nice. Let's take a look at the left limit as we approach that same value. So this time I'm using that parabola that uh, we had used on the previous problem, but this time we're doing it over at 1. So we're going to plug a 1 in, which 1 squared is 1, so we get a 4. Hey, look at that. We get the same number. So basically we have this, you know, this line that comes down and hits the point but doesn't fill it, but then I have this parabola that comes over and, um, and heads down. And uh, what did we say that was looking like? It was coming up. Was it going down by then? Yeah, so it would have come up and then headed down kind of like that, I think. And so um, everything is looking pretty good at four right now. Here's here's the weird thing, right? We know that we've got 89% of you guys got that right, so good job. Right on, right on. Um, here's the thing: um, the function actually defines um, this value somewhere else, right? So it's actually an open. Uh, it's an open circle there, and I will go ahead and create that for you because neither one of these dudes wants to take credit for the point at one, right? This is strictly less than one. This one's strictly greater than one. And the function says, you know, if you want to have a value for one, I'll give you one. But you know what? I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it eight. I'm actually going to make that value eight. Um, and so it's up here. Does that affect the limit? And the answer is no. No, it doesn't. Um, you've got that, that parabola that's arc, arcing up and coming down like this. You've got a line that's taken off from there. The limit says we're approaching the same height, right? The left limit was four, the right limit was four. So we don't care that there's not a point there. Limits don't care about that. What we're talking about this week does care about that. We're talking about continuity this week. For continuity to occur, that point would have to have uh, the same height, the same value. The function's value would have to be the same as the limit. But for a limit to exist, that's absolutely not necessary. So yeah, the limit is four, okay? Now I think uh, there were quite a few people who said that the limit did not exist because the point was uh, an open circle. But see, that's limits don't care about what's there. Limits only care what, about what's approaching. And that's the number one fundamental thing about limits that you have to get down, okay? Um, 
a bunch of you guys said the answer was eight, but now you're not talking about limits. Limits are not values of the function. Limits are values the function is approaching. So you just said the function's value at one was equal to eight, but that's not what the, that's not what the graphs were approaching. So the, there's a there's a big chunk of you guys, uh, roughly uh, 20, which is a you know uh, almost 30 percent, which just are not understanding what limits want yet, what limits mean, and these are the the kinds of things you're going to have to to watch uh, the videos, the lectures, if you haven't. I know a lot of people have not watched the lectures because I've seen some data that suggests that. Um, uh, you need to go out and look at some other people's lectures. Like I'll give you some options. I've got a couple I've seen that I think are pretty good, and I'll, I'll post those so that um, in your free time, uh, you know, you can go and check those out. Um, but that, that's really important because, you know, if you do the math right, you want to get the right answer. Um, so it, it's okay, but it, it's interesting that so many people got four and five right, but didn't get six right. That's just not understanding what the next one. Uh, number seven gets into the multiple choice section, and I think the next four, the next three questions were all about end behavior. Maybe the next four, I don't know. Let's check it out. So, what's the end behavior model of this function? Well, we're talking about power term over power term, and so five x to the sixth over ten x to the fifth. Uh, the x's cancel all the way down to 1x on top, and the 5 tenths is 1 half. And so we end up with, um, with just 1 half x, which is just a line. It kind of would look like this, wouldn't it? And so what is the end behavior that they want? Is it the right or the left? It looks like they want us to approach uh, positive infinity, so the right end behavior. So the right end behavior is going to be approaching positive infinity with the down up end behavior. It's heading up to the right. And uh, the end behavior model is one half x or x over two. So let's go through and see which one this is. Is the uh, is the limit one half? No, because we're you know approaching positive infinity. Is it negative infinity? If we were asking about the left end behavior, yes, that would be true. But we're not. Um, is I'm kind of going across, so I'm not going in order here. But is it zero? No, no. The numerator is more powerful than the denominator, so it's, it's going to diverge, not um, converge, is it B the answer, negative, positive infinity, because the end behavior is Y equals X, that's close, but it's not Y equals X, it's Y equals X over 2. Same end behavior, but not the same end behavior model. So it looks like D is the answer, which basically says the same thing as, um, as B, except it has the right end behavior model. So we are approaching positive infinity, yes, but we have the, the X over 2. So there you go. D, and uh, a lot of you guys agreed, so right on, right? We're very happy with that response. Um, number eight, uh, once again, end behavior uh, model, power term over power term. On these problems, the power terms were uh, mostly the first two terms, but you always got to look through and make sure you're getting the biggest exponent, right? You need the degree of the polynomial. Also notice that this time we're talking about the left end behavior. We're going to the negative infinity. All right, so what does 5x cubed over 10x to the fourth reduce to? 1 over 2x. So it really doesn't matter whether we're going to um, positive or uh, negative infinity. Both directions are going to be collapsing to zero. When we get fractions where the bottom is more powerful than the top, we have fractions that are less than 1. And remember, as we move towards uh, infinity, as we put bigger and bigger numbers in there, those fractions are going to get tinier and tinier collapsing to zero. Um, so let's take a look at our answers here. Which one is the correct answer? Uh, is it infinity? No. Is it zero? Because it has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Uh, probably. Um, is it uh, e one half? No. Is It would be if it was just one half, then it would be true, but it's one, one over two x, right? So the x in the bottom uh, zero is out the fraction. Is it uh, negative infinity? No, that would have been something that was moving down, not towards zero. Is it D? Uh, one half again, no. So the only one that was that was collapsing to zero with the right answer was C. Um, number eight. 
you did really well on, you know, 85% is pretty good on that. So understanding end behavior, I think, decently. Uh, the last end behavior model had the, the pi between powers, x to the fourth, x to the fourth. So all you get left with is a constant. So that becomes your end behavior. Your end behavior becomes a horizontal line at one half. And so it's not zero infinity, negative infinity. Now these all have the right answer, one half. So we have to pay attention to detail, right? We are approaching the right, positive infinity. Um, so we're not talking about left end behavior models. Um, we're not talking about vertical asymptotes. We're talking about horizontal asymptotes. So this one would actually make sense if they said horizontal asymptote, but the only one that had everything that we wanted was F, one half, because the right end behavior model is, is Y equals one half. So um, on this one we did, um, wow, interesting. Wonder what happened. Um, it looks like the distractors that were the biggest issues were right in here. Because this is a pretty big drop off compared to how well we did on 7 and 8. So what was throwing us off on D and E? Uh, okay, so this one had the right answer. You just didn't pay attention to this left end behavior model. We're not approaching negative infinity. This is, a, this is the limit as we move towards positive infinity. So we need to use the right end behavior. So maybe that's what it was on that. For those of you, that, about 10 of you guys that picked this one, okay? And then on E, I think um, we just didn't read vertical asymptote. Horizontal asymptote is what we uh, should have been looking for. So I, I think that that's why we missed that one. Uh, and that's just being more careful, reading more carefully, uh, because I think uh, the one half was right. Um, by the way, somebody uh, on uh, number seven, and I don't know why we, we had an, answer, an option to put others in here. Um, but somebody actually picked other here and then typed in their own answer that the uh, that for this diverging function as this guy goes, uh, you know, up, 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 right? Um, that there is no limit because infinity can't be a limit. And um, that's definitely true. Infinity is not a real number. But remember, we can describe end behavior and we can describe behavior at vertical asymptotes using infinity and negative infinity as directions. And so the answer actually was right in line with the homework that we've been doing all week when we, you know, when we chose infinity as an end behavior direction. Um, I kind of, I mean, I like the thinking, but sometimes you overthink. Trust me, uh, on the quit next quiz I write, um, I won't try to confuse you by putting in the, the other things, okay? Um, I think we're back on number 10, which is, um, so here we have a vertical asymptote. This is one where if you kept doing end behavior, we would have said, oh, look, uh, the bottom is more powerful than the top. And so it's going to collapse to zero. And you probably would have said the answer was C. We'll see how many people pick that. But this is not end behavior. And after doing a couple end behavior questions, sometimes you just don't even pay attention. This is asking what happens when we move towards seven from the left. And you know we know that if it was just two over x, the graph would kind of look like one over x. It would look like this. But with that seven, um, it's been horizontally shifted right over to positive seven. Notice there's no negatives though that have reflected it in any way. And so as we approach seven from the left, we are still going to be going down that vertical asymptote towards negative infinity. So that should have been the answer on that one. Um, you guys, this is not a graphing question, but heck, you certainly could have graphed it on your calculators at home, which is true about all of these. We, we understand at this point that you guys probably use your calculators as much as you want. So, um, you know, if that's what you're going to do, do it. But you could definitely have done this one just by analyzing the, uh, the parent function. Um, not, not big problems on that, you know, 85%. It does look, what did we say was the one? Uh, C was the one. So there were probably about four of you guys that got sucked into the, the, the end behavior question, uh, thought it was end behavior, but this one was not end behavior. This one was vertical asym asymptotic behavior, but 85% uh, is pretty darn good. So I agree with Zach, good job. Uh, number 11, we're going back to end behavior. Okay, we're, we're looking at, well, it looks like actually two, three of them are end behaviors because it talks about horizontal asymptotes and behaviors. 
couple of them are vertical asymptotes. So we better analyze this too. Um, let's do the end behavior first. The powers are equal, so we're just going to get a 2. So it's going to have a horizontal asymptote at 2. And I do not see that in here. Uh, in fact, uh, this is wrong, we know. And this is wrong. Okay. So, um, oh, but the end behavior model is 2. So it looks like this one's right. So we'll keep A. Uh, what about the vertical asymptotes? Well, you're never going to analyze those without being able to factor, right? So you factor the top, factor the bottom. And here's what we find out. We find out that um, this guy does not cancel, so it's a vertical asymptote. This guy does cancel, so it's a hole, which is a removable discontinuity. So um, holes don't create vertical asymptotes, but vertical asymptotes do. And so that negative 2 root right there um, is going to be the other one that we keep, right? So it looks like the answer on this one should have been A and C. And the vast majority of you guys agreed, 82%, well done. Um, there were even more of you that picked one or the other. You know, 97% knew that there was an end behavior model of two. That's almost everybody, right? Two people didn't get that. Um, so that's fantastic. Uh, and then almost 90% of you um, got this. Now, there, there was a big drop off between 89% and 82%. So I think maybe some of you guys thought this was multiple choice and only picked one right answer. But still, overall, 82% is pretty solid. All right, number 12, uh, and behavior again. This is one where you really got to look out because they did not put the power term in the denominator up front. It's actually right here. And I think some people missed it because they forgot to carry the negative sign with it. So we get negative 3 over x for the end behavior model. Um, that doesn't mean negative 3 over x is the vertical asymptote. So, it, you know, we're not going to have um, E be an answer. In fact, the bottom is more powerful than the top. So what this means is that the end behavior of this is going to collapse to zero, right, when the bottom overpowers the top. And do any of them have a horizontal asymptote at zero? Heck yeah, D does, right? And um, does it have any vertical asymptotes? Well, let's factor the bottom. Yeah, it has one at two and one at negative two. Neither of those cancel, right? So, um, you know, is there only one vertical asymptote at, at, at 2? No. Uh, we can't pick C because there's two vertical asymptotes, one at 2 and one at negative 2. And the end behavior model we already said was negative 3 over x. I think some people might have picked D 3 over x because they forgot to carry that negative sign with them. Let's check it out. Oh, my goodness. Whew, 30%. Um, the good news is that 87% of you, it's a lot, knew that D was right. That's good. That is good news. Um, the, uh, the bad news is that, you know, 32 and 31% of you, and even 21% of you also thought that B, C, or E was correct. And um, so C was the one where, where, there, where there's only one vertical asymptote listed, and you had to knew there were two. So that's why you missed it. And then uh, B was the one, so about a third of you uh, lost the negative sign and, and didn't have the negative sign there. So simple mistakes to be made, certainly. But, um, but you got to watch that. All right, uh, number 13, uh, and behavior model again. 8x to the fourth over 6x is going to reduce all the way down to four-thirds x cubed, which, you know, we know what cubics look like, don't we? They look like that. They have down, up, end behavior. And there is a zero in the bottom. If I set um, 6x minus 4 equal to zero, I get two-thirds. So there is a vertical asymptote uh, that we could identify at two-thirds. So just a little bit over here uh, is where we would find that. Um, Probably give it a different color so that it stands out. There we go. So, uh, is the end behavior model four thirds? No, um, because we just said it was uh, four thirds x cubed, right? Oh, like this, right? Four thirds x cubed. Um, is there a uh, is the limit four thirds? No, the limit. This is an infinite limit, so this is end behavior. 
and it's positive end behavior, that should have been positive infinity we were approaching. So that's not right. Um, there's no vertical asymptote. No, we definitely found one right here. So that's not right. Uh, this is probably the trickiest one right here. Um, this, I, I almost fell through this because uh, we, we, we solved for the vertical asymptote at two thirds, right? But look what it was. It was x equals two thirds. X equals two thirds, not y equals two thirds. Y equals two thirds would be a horizontal line. Is that tricky? Uh, yeah, probably a little bit. Um, but uh, but you really got to pay attention to detail on this stuff. So the answer on that one was B. Yeah, almost 90% of you guys got it uh, right. The problem is that so many of you picked E that it dropped the overall correct rate all the way down to 17% on this question. So that was that was a little bit dirty. Um, I will. I'll probably throw a point back in just uh, out of good nature. So when I enter the, the campus scores, I'll probably bump you one. Uh, number 14 was end behavior models. And this is where you really have to know who's more powerful and what in which direction, right? We know that, um, that x squared looks like this. And we I hope that you know that e to the x looks like this. And you put them together. And we would say that x squared is going to be more important, is more powerful going that way, and that e to the x is more powerful going this way. If you don't know what's more powerful, a quadratic or a an exponential, I would highly encourage you to check out the, the supplement uh, I put on. There's a sheet of paper called M Behavior, Relative M Behavior uh, Strength or Power. And it's it's just a free page of notes I put on there, and it shows you all the parent functions and who is more powerful than who. But you can see that e to the x, the red graph, is going to climb much faster than x squared. Um, it looks like x squared may be faster for a little while, but boy, it doesn't last long. Um, if you really uh, zoom out, uh, it's not even close. So, with that being said, um, the left end behavior model is x squared. I agree with that. And the right end behavior is e to the x, and I agree with that. So, a and e, and you know, okay. I mean, end behavior stuff is a little tricky, but if you if you know your parent functions, this is not that tough. I, I wonder how many of you guys need to go back and review the graphs of your parent functions from Unit One, um, page uh, sixty-seven. I think is a really good page to help you out with that. So that's all the graphs on the same page. Uh, so this one was just a regular question. I, I made it to bonus. And, it's the same kind of thing. Who is more powerful? So uh, we've got 3x, which is just a line, and we've got e to the negative x. So instead of instead of coming across and going up like this, right? This time it's going to come down and then flatten out. So um, even though 3x is just a linear function, it's more powerful going to the right. And then exponentials are our most powerful graphs. It's more more powerful going to the left. So um, with that being said, our definition for end behavior models is uh, that if you divide a function by its end behavior model, then the limit as you go towards plus or minus infinity, depending if we're talking about left or right, should go to one, should go to one. And so that's what they're asking here. Is to, is to verify that definition. Um, so we said that, let's do the right end behavior first. Uh, we said that 3x was the right end behavior model. So 3x plus e to the x, so f of x over 3x, g of x, f of x over g of x should approach one as we go to positive infinity. Well, here's f of x over g of x, but it's approaching negative infinity. So that's not the one we want. Um, Here's f of x over g of x, but it's going to negative infinity. That's not what we want. Here's f of x over g of x going to positive infinity, right, and an equal one. So that's exactly the one we want right there. And so we'll take uh, take a little bit of e. Now, in the left-hand behavior model, 3x plus e to the x over e to the negative x 
would approach one going towards negative infinity. Um, that is, so f of x over h of x is what we're looking at, going to next. So here's h, f of x over h of x, but we're going back towards uh, the right again, so that's not right. Up here it is, f of x over h of x is approaching one as we approach negative infinity. So that looks like the one that we want. That's it. Now, um, if uh, if we had been in the classroom and, and we could have you know done a written test like the good old days, you would have probably been asked to prove this. And so you would have had to prove that the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 3x plus e to the negative x divided by e to the negative x approaches 1. Um, why does it approach 1? Well, because when you divide something by itself, you get 1. So what we're saying is the further out we go, the closer that we, uh, we get to 1. Um, remember the way we do this is that we split the fraction, we split the limit. So let's take this, add it, right? We're adding these, add it to the limit of, oops, add it to the limit of this. Well, this, because the more powerful thing is on the bottom, e to the negative x to the left is going to overpower 3 of x, so it's going to go to 0. Okay, more powerful function in the denominator. This is really just the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 1. e to the negative x divided by itself is 1. And what's 0 plus 1? It's 1. And that's what proves the, uh, the thing that we were trying to prove. Okay. So, um, you, you know, we, we did a bunch of problems, well, not a bunch, we probably did about a dozen, half dozen problems like that last week. You had to turn one in. And so hopefully you kind of understand that process. It's very repetitive. It's kind of always the same idea, but uh, that's, that's what we're looking at. And um, so not all 71 people tried it. If it was 71, it would have been a 54% success. But 65 did, and so 58 tried it. Now, that's better than some of the non-bonus problems, so it's really not too bad um, when you think about it that way. Um, Homer is not so sure. He's a little bit like, eh, 58 percent is not too good. But, you know, you'll live to fight another day, right? Um, there are certainly going to be more challenges coming up, more bonus problems. I bet that this week has something to do with continuity. So hopefully you got some... Um, some clarity by looking at certain problems on this as you look over your quiz, which is uh, going to be released in the next probably five minutes. And then um, let me know uh, either at tonight, today's review session, maybe tomorrow's review session, or just in, a, in, a, in an email message of some kind um, if you have further questions. If you miss things and you don't know why and you don't do anything about them, then Boy, I hope you're not going to calculus because you just put you're setting yourself up to be in, in a really rough situation around a bunch of people who know what's going on um, and, and you don't. That's not the way you want to start the most challenging math class that you've ever taken next year if you're taking count. So um, we'll uh, we'll talk to you uh, soon. And hopefully, you do reach out if you need uh, any help from me. Uh, take care.